Okay, um, this tutorial is going to be on or about polar zonohendrons, often called zomes. Uh, there's a small dedicated group of folk who build, build zomes and initially if you take a quick look at I've, I've knocked up some quick examples of what the types of things you can do. Um, there's a, a you know you can join that this is a, in the center we have a standard just a straight um, with a base uh, obviously been cut off to make a base this, this on the left has been spiraled down a little bit like uh, those um, shells and things like that and this one is just directly pulled away there's a there's a whole load of uh, different um, building shapes you can create using zonohendrons the reason being is that all the edge lengths are the same uh, if you if you all all of these lengths are always the same and if you look at the top two small diamonds, two of those small diamonds fit into where one of the next diamond goes. Let's have a quick go back to the beginning so you can see that. So two of the top triangles will fit into the next triangle down, and and uh, three of the neck of the top triangles will fit in the the second one down. So the, there's a whole range of things you can do to join them together. People tend to think that they're quite complicated and that you may need some sort of specialist software to generate zones um, or s something like that, or that they're quite difficult to, to hand draw. Um, actually, it's uh, of all the shapes I've uh, drawn on the computer, these are actually the easiest. They're dead simple to create, and you wouldn't think so really looking at them. Um, Let's have a look at a basic zone. That's our start point. It's a polar zonohendron. This is a zone 12, zone 12, I should say, um, because it has 12 zones. A zone is one of these curved, uh, double curved helix type set of panels. It has a thin diamond, slightly fatter diamond, slightly fatter diamond after that, continuing down until you get to the center so that that creates how many different uh, diamond frames they are uh, in this case this is a zone 12 so it'll have six uh, different uh, panels uh, and then it just repeats back backwards down to the to the point here uh, and this this is a zone 12 here but you can you can have a anything up from up from a five really you can have a zone five zone six seven eight nine ten and you can keep going the 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 bigger you go the uh the more the smaller the panels and the the, the greater the number of panels you'll have you'll always have half the um the the number of panels is half what the zones are on a zonohendron if that makes any sense Okay, now that we know what a polar zonohendron is, we'll just use the term zome from now. Um, we can look at how to make one. Uh, the example I showed was a zone zome twelve, uh, but we'll build a slightly simpler one. But the process is exactly the same. Uh, what you have to do to uh, to build any um, zome, uh, you need to first choose how many zones you want. So it's the the, the the level of detail, the smoothness, or the size of panel that you need—that's what's going to influence your decision on what you're going to. Let's let's just pick a number. Um, should we do a zone ten? Yeah. Okay. Let's do a zone ten. Okay. To start, uh, we need our polygon tool, and then we need to choose the number. How many zones we're having? So uh, I'm going on this one. I'm going to make it a ten-sided polygon. So this creates a, a, what's known as a zone ten. Uh, that's the number of zones around the polar zonohendron. It sounds complicated, but it's actually super simple. We'll make what you best. The, the best thing I found is to when building these is to use a large scale. So let's put this out at um, let's go ten thousand. 10,000 millimeters. So it's nice and big. 
this because uh, what we'll do is we'll draw it really huge um, and then we'll uh, shrink it down because then any uh, because we're going to do some maths on this if for example we need to double some numbers if there's a point one two seven six five it just rounds it up so your doubling can be slightly out so if you make it of a, a, a really large scale it minimizes any kind of uh, random uh, size differences right let's let's uh, draw a line on the blue axis uh, what should we make that um, we'll make that the same 10,000 it can actually be anything you want um, no reason why you can make it I'll show you when I've finished why that it can be anything you want but it, it really doesn't matter what that is let's draw a that's a, a um, triangle now obviously this is the very top of our zone um, and we know that it has diamond panels and not triangular ones um, but this is this how we start so all you need is a uh, 10,000 millimeters uh, we'll call it a uh, 10 meter 10 meter diameter polygon shoot whatever one you like and and uh, 10 meter up this creates a um, triangle and what we have to do next is well, there's a bit of maths involved in this so we have to find the midpoint and that gives us uh, a length of 13800 which is 27600 see so what we what we have effectively done is we're making a another triangle exact same size as this one on the same plane but um hang on, let me just do this there uh what we're doing is uh taking our well let, let's make that into a, a component shall we edit make component and we'll call that uh, dim one create right so we have a component now uh, obviously I'm gonna make this uh, you don't have to do them all but uh, it, it makes it a wee bit easier to, visually I should say uh, right well let, let's uh, rotate about there and it's 36 degrees times um, it's a zone 10 so we need nine more bingo uh, you don't need to do the whole lot you just need to do you need to do two as a minimum but I've done done the whole lot um, just to show you right uh, that's the very top of our zone so what we do next is take our pencil and uh, notice how there's there's, there's no um, it's all very straightforward there's no complicated things anybody can draw straight lines in SketchUp we do exactly the same again we we draw a tri triangle out of the out of the space that's left and we take the top of the triangle go to the center and and then double it and this one it's 12 8 6 2 that makes 25 7 2 4 is exactly double so we're effectively making a mirror image on the same plane of this uh, triangle we make our mirror image and then we rub that out we then do a click to select everything file edit sorry make component and we'll call this dim2 just for the Right, then we we'll, we we'll do the same process again. 
which is we rotate about the central point. 36 degrees, remember, times 9. And that gives us our next layer down. Now, we will know that um, this is a zone 10. So we, we know that we have five different unique panels. So we know that we have to do this five times. So I shall crack on and let's probably speed this video up a touch and get the next five panels knocked in. Okay, now we're at well, our halfway point. We've built half of the zonohindrin. Uh, what we can do next is you could keep that process going, and it would it would continue round and finish that finish that um, process right the way down to a point. But as we're halfway and uh, it's an even one, you can we can just take the top of this and turn it upside down. Um, to and slotted in. Uh, that way we're using the same components that we've already made and we're not making new components that are a repeat of an old com of a, an existing component. The, the, the um, middle far, middle one is a shared so it's shared from the top and the bottom um, so we only need to select above that uh, and turn this turn this round. It doesn't really matter where we... As long as we turn it 180 degrees, there we go. And then we just move it up to the bottom. There we go. That's our finished zoom 10, this one is. So what you can do is, if you select and rescale, you can rescale up and down to make it short and fat. Let's just see that. So you can make it uh, squat. Uh, we'll undo that. Or you can make it taller just by um, stretching from this from the this point here. And you'll notice uh, that if we take the tape measure. Um, I found this quite interesting actually, is that uh, if we measure there we get 1648, 1648, 1648, it, it, um, all of these edges measure the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this down, uh, let's go scale, we'll do it about a tenth. That's a, uh, that's as much as this one will do. And let's look in on that now. This is the tenth of the size that we initially started out with. Uh, and then we'll measure that. That's one point what fifteen fifty six, which is more realistic. Fifteen fifty six. That's better. That's the reason you you use a huge scale. And then you take it down 1556. We can go all the way down this, and now that our scale is tighter, it's 1556 now. Yeah, all of these edge lengths are 1556. And then you can, from that point, you can um, stretch it tall ways if you want, or make it lower.
So that's how you build um, polar zona hindrance. So you can now knock yourself out and build any number of them. Uh, I'll probably put upload a, um, a a couple more videos because there is a, a ton of things you can do with these, uh, and they are really an interesting structure. I really quite like them, and I haven't actually built one yet, but that'll probably be my next one of my next jobs is to build one of them. But uh, for now, happy drawn, and I'll catch you later.